the manager of the New York Yankees, who no, joins us on the phone right now. Aaron, Craig, and Evan, did you fall in love with Tom Brady when you saw him hugging his son after the game the other day? <laughs> I thought it was a nice moment. See that? Uh, Told you. That doesn't yeah. mean he's in love with him. He fell him. in love with him. He doesn't uh, want to admit it because it's like a guy code in the locker room, but he fell in love with him, right? <laughs> uh, maybe a little strong. It was a, <laughs> it was a nice moment. He's in deep like. Is, well, is, wait a second. Is. Is. What's your favorite football team? Eagles. Oh, you're an Eagle fan. Okay. There's cool. no way you even like Tom Brady a little bit. You beat him in the Super Bowl. It's Boston. It's Massachusetts. Like, you know deep in your soul, you, you'll you say it respectfully because you're a class guy, you despise Tom Brady, Aaron. Fair to say? <laughs> um, not anymore. I've, I find myself sort of cheering for him down now that he's in uh, Tampa. Wow. Yeah, so, but... Yeah. Wow. I said the same thing. He yeah. no wow. longer plays for the team I hate. Anyway, Aaron Boone wow. is here. He's the manager of the New York Yankees. We appreciate your time. I was just saying to uh, one of the big Yankee fans on the staff, Big Mac here, that you know people in town are sick and tired of hearing about the Mets, talking about the Mets, Mets this, <laughs> Mets that. And I, you know, I had to remind people, you know, take out last year because of the, the shortened season. All you've done is won 100 games every year you've been the manager. And yet it, it almost seems for some people like, oh, that's not enough. So uh, as you get ready for this spring training, which we'll get to in a few minutes with you, overall, how are you feeling about the roster? And more, most specifically, you know, what's your worry level or comfort level with your current uh, starting pitching rotation? Um, all right, as we sit here now, I'm I'm very excited. Um, it's it's been a it's been a long year and a long winter, and you know, trying to figure out how you do it through all this and waiting for direction as far as spring training goes in this upcoming season. And, um, you know, it's been a weird winter just watching, you know, free agents go off the board and things happen and where clubs are. Um, I think we're really good. Um, I, I feel like we've been a championship caliber team that hasn't broken through yet. Um, uh, we've, we've kind of knocked on that door and we want to kick it in and, the year before like the year before um we're certainly one of those teams that i feel like legitimately has a chance for that um and we got to find out now um i feel very good about our pitching um we're really excited about kluber and tyone joining joining our rotation i I think one of the good things that came out of last year is some of our young pitchers that you know we're, we're very excited about we feel like have really bright futures got their feet wet and, and to varying degrees had a lot of success. Um, and, and so we feel like with, with Jameson and Corey coming on while we acknowledge some risk there, because, you know, obviously coming off of injury and not pitching much at all in the last year, year and a half. Um, we also know they're healthy and that they're really talented and we feel like we have the depth, hopefully, that can that can support them and and hopefully we can get them in a position to um, not only have a good season for us but hopefully be pitching at their best and what we hope is meaningful games at the end. One thing about DJ because you made it clear priority is to bring back DJ LeMahieu and it made a, Yankee fans a little bit nervous at times. Was there ever a point in this off season where you thought you're going to lose DJ LeMahieu to another team? Um. I don't know if I thought we were going to lose him to another team. There were definitely moments of, I, I th- that was certainly possible. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I was, you know, certainly wanting the ending, the ending that ultimately happened with us getting them back. But yeah, there were absolutely moments where I'm like, Ooh, maybe, maybe we're going to have to pivot and go in a different direction. You don't never know how things are going to unfold or you never know if, if there's a, it only takes one sometimes for a team that, completely you know blows people out of the water and changes the direction but um i'm fired up that we got not only you know one of the leaders on the field and the top of our order and the defensive flexibility he gives us but somebody that's been you know as you know how important our clubhouse is and our culture is he he's he's one of the for for as quiet as you know i think he his reputation is he is absolutely one of the drivers of 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 our culture behind the scenes. Talking to uh, Aaron Boone, Aaron, a lot of people say, well, 
You know, the stadium's built for a certain kind of hitter. How come the Yankees don't go out there and get a Kyle Schwarber? Why don't we get, you know, a left-handed DH or another, you know, a guy that can platoon here and there? And Brian Cashman made the point a few months back that when you look at the stats, you know, lefties uh, that play in Yankee Stadium, both on your team and for the other team, aren't hitting all their home runs to right field. As a manager, though... How much did you uh, talk to uh, Cashman and the and the ownership about? Hey, can we get a left-handed bat somehow into this lineup? Yeah, so I mean, we have those conversations, you know, right after the season as we evaluate our roster, as we kind of go through and look at all the other free agents out there, and look at the possible matchups from a trade standpoint. So, um, first, I would say I don't think home runs or lack of home runs. Is, is has been an issue for us, whether we're right or left hand. I think, look, in a perfect world, you, you like to have, you know, that perfect balance where you have, you know, a fair amount of right-handed hitters, fair amount of left-handed hitters, switch hitters, whatever it is, to kind of give you that proper balance. But, you know, as Cash has said, like, you also don't want to – it's hard to match up with, with certain people and certain teams. And, um, you know, you don't want to – go to a lower level of talent just for the sake of balancing out, especially when you have a very good offense. So it's something that I know cash is always looking at and looking at different options, but you got to have a match too. And and we haven't had that. We're talking Aaron Boone, manager of the New York Yankees. You mentioned Kluber and Tyone haven't pitched a lot the last two years, but they're healthy now. Mm -hmm. Will there be restrictions on them throughout the season and early on? Because they haven't thrown a lot of innings in the last two years. So if they're going out making starts every five days and you're getting five, six innings right. out of them, that number is going to multiply quick. So will there be restrictions on them early on and throughout the season? I, I don't know necessarily early on because, you know, we feel like they're coming in having had a normal off season had they been healthy. Like they're through the rehab process a long time ago, and now they're preparing to get ready for the season. So I, I view them as being – you know, very similar to a healthy pitcher coming in. Um, I think the conversations we're having now and we'll continue to have and we'll continue to have as the, as the season unfolds is, you know, are, are there times where we've got to back off or, or skip a guy a, a turn through or, or, you know, go shorter in an outing with them. These are things that will be fluid throughout the season that we'll kind of be looking at, you know, trying to measure what their stuff looks like um, from start to start, how they are feeling, how they're bouncing back, how their recovery is. Are there times with a day off that we can build in an extra day's rest for them? Those will be things that we kind of monitor throughout the season. Um, I don't think we'll go in with any kind of hard number like, oh, he's going to throw this X amount of innings and not go over that. I think it'll be something that we are certainly mindful of and we'll – Air on the side of protecting them, but um, you know, I, there's nothing we're going to hard line put a number on because at the end of the day, we feel like if we can have them healthy and strong and pitching like we we think they're capable of, these are two guys that are capable of of starting playoff games against other elite starters. Talking to Aaron Boone, of course, manager of the New York Yankees, the guy you asked most about this entire off season. Dun, 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 dun. Gary Sanchez. DJ LeMay here. <laughs> oh. oh, well, now well, now the DJ's here, no one's going to ask you about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was when he may or may not be coming back. But it's Gary Sanchez, and I've heard a bunch of the interviews you did. I know Sweeney put something out. You said, I guess, at a press conference earlier today that you have a great relationship with him, you know, man-to-man. You've talked a lot with him. You know, one mm-hmm. of the things he said was that, you know, he didn't know if he was playing or not playing a game, and that was confusing for him, I guess. But mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out, We've all seen Gary Sanchez at his best and now at his worst. Yeah. As a guy who has played, walk me through this part because I, I don't get this part of it. You know, what happened to him at the plate where he just suddenly couldn't hit the ball? Is that right. all mental? Is that what you guys call the zone? Is that confidence? What like When you guys try to figure that out, did you come up mm-hmm. with an answer as to the why part of that question? Yeah, I mean, the one thing I would always say is, you know, even even for guys with great talent and great ability and that have done it, 
hitting, hitting is very difficult and, and can be a little bit fickle, even for great hitters. And I think last year was such a unique, weird season that you saw some uneven performances, you know, across the league from guys that maybe you wouldn't necessarily expect it, that I bet you'll have a lot of really good players that have bounced back years this year and hopefully what's a more normal season. And I think for Gary, you know, I think he got off to a really tough start. Um, and, and there's probably in a, you, you know, that it's a 60 game season. It's not a normal season. So you're trying to make some corrections and then all of a sudden it can become a little bit physical. It, be, it can become a little bit mental as you try and make up ground and you know, you don't have a full season to do it. And, you know, consequently it ends up being a struggle. Um, I do think at the end of the year, even though he still wasn't getting great results, I feel like he was a lot closer actually um, to the guy we've seen, you know, throughout and very much. And, and, and I think by our actions here, you know, committing to him and, and getting ready to start spring training that we believe that we're absolutely going to get the all-star catcher out of it. And it's, and it's on us to continue to try and pull that out. But I feel like as we sit here right now at the end of January, he's in a good place and, and getting ready to for, now, for spring training. If I'm not mistaken, did he committed to playing some winter ball? Uh, cause mm-hmm. it was, because he was so, you know, I guess upset with himself and wanted to prove to you guys he's all in and the work ethics there. So that's not the issue. So how is he? Did he play winter ball yet? And how did he look? He did. He, he, he got, I don't, I don't know how many 30, 40 at bats, maybe he, he went and got down there. And I think he just wanted to get some more ABs. You know, he went down to Tampa right after, right after our season, um, you know, worked with Marcus a little bit, um, just some minor, you know, tinkering with some mechanical things and then, um, went and got some at bats with it. It went well. And, um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing, um, what he does this year. I respect I, that. I, 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 res- I would think you guys as an organization respect that. He didn't have to go to, go to Winter Ball contractually, right? No, it was, it was in matter of fact, it was he, he drove it. He, he yeah. told us he was going to play Winter Ball. And um, look, I think, I think sometimes in this game, inevitably you're going to get punched in the mouth and you're going to get knocked down a little bit. And, and I think if you can learn from those times and, and it, it, it helps shape you as a, as a better player moving forward when you go through ups and downs in this game, which certainly he has. You know, Craig was mentioning the comments he made a couple months ago when he said there was a lack of community. He didn't know why he wasn't playing. And I say this as somebody that mm-hmm. defended Gary a lot right here on this station. Did you really right. need to explain it? I mean, he knows well, he at 147. Like, do you did you feel like you needed to explain it? I thought it was obvious. Well, yeah, obviously I know that headline got a lot of, a lot of play and and the reason there wasn't a conversation is because I made no decision to quote unquote bench him. Right. You know, it was a it was a daily decision that I was making. And and I think what gets lost in this equation is how really well Kyle Higashioka was playing for us at the end of the year. An outstanding defender. That's always been his calling card. But he was really hitting the ball and hitting the ball with power at the end of the season and even in the playoffs. So he was pushing himself into the conversation on a year that was an up-and-down year for Gary. So I was literally going home every night after our playoff games and getting with Carlos Mendoza, my bench coach, and or and the other coaches and, and making the decision right. kind of overnight. And when I woke up, it was the same with Gardy and Frazier. It, that was one of those that... I didn't make a decision to go with a guy. I was making a daily decision based on the matchup, based on what I was seeing or what I was feeling. So well, um, that's why there was no conversation. Yeah, and the reality I, is if, if we beat the Rays in Game 5, Gary's probably starting Game 1 of the championship series. Right. I, I guess with him it was you didn't play him in Game 1 because Garrett Cole pitched. Because I guess at that time, mm-hmm. Kyle was almost you know catching him exclusively. Yes. He plays Game 2, hits a home run. Great. And I yep. guess, all right, now you guys have three, four days off. Now you go play Tampa Bay. He doesn't play in game one. Again, Garrett Cole factor, if memory serves correct. Then he plays in game two, goes over four, doesn't play again. So I guess that that kind of, right. the way the events transpired has probably led to that his confusion on why there wasn't a conversation. But does that, 
mean that moving forward? Like, do you look reflectively and say, all right, I guess I should talk to him after I make that decision in my hotel room so that we are on the same page so he isn't confused the next day on why he isn't um, playing? Yeah, you know, I I don't think we have a communication problem, <laughs> um, honestly, with our team. And, um, and, and I try and get out ahead of things with our guys and – let them know where I stand and, and what I'm thinking. So, and, and honestly with, with Gary, he and I are really in a good place. And we had a long conversation right after the season before he headed down to Tampa. We've had uh, conversations since about, you know, the off season heading into this season. So, um, I mean, yeah, I, I always try and err on the side of, you know, communicating with guys, but um, you know, those are, something that I don't feel like is an issue right. with us. Talking to uh, Aaron Boone, a few more moments here, manager of uh, the New York Yankees. Any word on your guys' end uh, about starting this uh, thing on time? Uh, you know, pitchers and catchers and spring training, what's the the kind of scuttlebutt right now amongst you guys? I mean, I, I was on a call with all the other managers yesterday, and, and they told us to, you know, we're a go for February 17th for starting. Um, so that's, that's what I'm preparing for. That's what we're preparing for. And, uh, you know, one thing 2020 and, and in, now into 2021 has taught, taught us all is to stay in the athletic position, stay ready. Yep. And, and, uh, we'll be ready to adjust however we do, but we're getting ready as if we're starting in a couple of weeks. Yeah. It's funny. Baseball is so different than the other sports. Cause it's not a constant action sport where the crowd is ebbing and flowing, reacting to a hit, a play, a pass, etc. Looking back now on the strangest year, I'm sure, of any year you've ever been involved with, or, you know, your dad, your brother, you know, and the talks you guys used to have about, you know, baseball through the 70s and 80s and on and on and on. When you look back on it now, how strange was the, like, fourth inning of a random game. Was it tangible? How different it was? Was it hard for guys? Was it hard for you not having the energy of people in the, in the stands, et cetera? Um, it, it was honestly less hard than I expected. Um, I did notice it a couple of times when I really noticed it was our first Boston series at home at Yankee stadium. And then at Fenway park, that's where you just really miss that edge that Yankee Stadium provides or Fenway Park provides. But uh, I was surprised at how easily I got into just kind of locked into game mode. And, you know, they had the fake crowd noise pumped in. And actually, I do remember when we were playing the Indians in Cleveland in the in the first round, what was remarkable because they had the they had it loud. It felt like. If, if you didn't look up, you felt like you were in the playoffs hmm. in a loud building with, you know, the, the guy in left field that beats the drum. That's, that's piping through the, the, the airwaves and it's cold. So it felt like the playoffs. Um, that, that actually surprised me. But once games started, for me, for the most part, it was easy to kind of just get in my mode and locked into my world. Uh, but I did notice it, especially when we played Boston. That's where I really. I Miss the energy. As fans, the best part was hearing the you guys and the Tampa Bay Rays yell at each other all year. Basically, the <laughs> trash talk that we heard. That was the best. And by the way, what do you think? Like as a putting your baseball analyst cap on the state uh -huh. of your division? Because the Rays, I know they're the Rays. We got to respect them. They got worse though. I mean, let's be honest. They lost Charlie Morton. They traded away Blake Snell. The Blue Jays are feisty. The Red Sox are blah. Like, how would you kind of assess? the state of the American League East based on what's gone on this offseason. Well, I get you just summed it up there. <laughs> you like that? You agree with my assessment? The Red Sox are blah. You like um, that? Look, I, I think the Rays are still, I, I think what gets a little bit lost with the Rays is just how how outstanding of a farm system they've been able to build up. And so they're going to have a couple of guys this year that, you know, probably in, in a lot of ways burst on the scene at the major league level. So I, I still expect them to be very good. Obviously, Toronto's getting better. Um, you know, Boston has made some moves on the, on the, on the periphery that you, you would expect them that last year was a little bit of an aberration, especially for some of the down years some of their offensive players had and some of the, 
and, and they really struggled in the pitching department. But they're, you know, with Alex back there, I, I think they're going to have some have some bounce back from some guys, and I think they're going to be dangerous. And and Baltimore's they're they're getting better. I mean, you know, as much as they're stripping it down and trying to build up their farm system, uh, they're they're better this year uh, probably than they were last year and certainly the year before. The you- do you, I totally understood what DJ LeMahieu said the other day, and he's taking a little heat for it when he says, you know, I think we were better than the Tampa Bay Rays. Because I kind of felt that all year watching you guys, despite the fact the Rays beat mm-hmm. you a lot. I get it. Just as a baseball fan, I look at the two rosters, I look at the two teams, I thought you guys mm-hmm. were better, and I know nothing backs that up because they beat you. Did you feel mm-hmm. that way? Like, was that a sentiment in that room all year that, you know, despite everything that happened, you were better than that team? Well, I would say since I've been here, I've never felt, walking out on the field that we were not better than a team. <laughs> um, but um, I don't want to lose sight of the fact of how good a team and how good a year that the Rays had last year. And in a lot of ways, I think we felt that kind of coming at the latter part of 2018, what they had. And I think last year, the way in a, obviously the 60 game season and where we had 28 man rosters, I think the way they constructed their team that really they were constructing that over a two, three year period really made them a unique team with 28 guys, because now all of a sudden they could really, they they just really had a lot of good complementary parts to where, you know, if, if they had 13 or 14 pitchers, obviously an outstanding bullpen, but they had, you know, 13 or 14 position players then that all kind of left, right, this guy plays here defensively, and they were kind of really well put together and complemented each other to kind of form this outstanding sort of nine-man offense as opposed to doing it with 13 or 14 players. So uh, they were they were really good and really a complete team and obviously had our number last year and hopefully um, – you know, we can answer back this year. Going to wrap it up here in a second with uh, Aaron Boone, uh, manager of the New York Yankees. Quick non-Yankee question, just to get your take. Uh, again, as, as uh, Evan said earlier, make you an analyst here again for a second. Put you back in the in the booth on TV. Okay. What's Aaron Boone think on the MLB <laughs> Network? Well, um, <laughs> Trevor Bauer. I, uh-huh. You know, he's the best starting pitcher available for any team that's looking mm-hmm. for a starter. But you know, he's not Garrett Cole, like you, you know, two years right. ago. Just you know, ability, went one loss, record area, all that stuff. And that's not a knock. There are very few Garrett Coles in, in the sport. Uh, just mm-hmm. get, handicap for me, since he's not going to the New York Yankees. What is the thought amongst the guys on Trevor Bauer? Is he closer to I don't know, risky, flashy in the pan, or boy, I'd love to have that personality and that guy in my clubhouse. Where 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 am I missing the boat on Trevor Bauer? Well, I, I've never, you know, I've never had him or in the clubhouse. I don't haven't had really much interaction with him. Um, I would say his talent is, you know, pretty undeniable. I, I think he's he's a great pitcher. Um, probably in a lot of ways has had a unique, interesting path, and you know, capped it off with a Cy Young award last year, albeit in a weird season where you're only playing divisional games. Um, but, you know, I, I, there's no denying that, you know, when I watch him, I'm, I, I feel like I'm looking at, you know, kind of that ace caliber pitcher. Got it. All right. I'm trying to figure that out because yeah, this is a strange offseason. You know, most teams, including yours, took a bath financially. So guys aren't, you know, spending willy-nilly. And here's a guy that did win the Cy Young that it does not appear to have that many suitors. And I'm not sure if that has to do with, you know, who he is off the field and some of the, you know, social media crap or if just uh, the, the nature of the business this particular offseason, which brings me to a guy that is not yet committed to being back in your clubhouse. And I know it's a sensitive topic because he's a great Yankee. Cashman said uh, just mm-hmm. as much earlier today. Uh, what are your thoughts on Brett Gardner being back? We'll see. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I would echo that exactly. I mean, he, Gardy has been a great Yankee, and I think the thing with Gardy is he's still a really good player. That's that's the thing. Even whatever, whatever he's thirty-seven, I don't, I don't even know how old he is, but 
he's not he doesn't play like an aging player and and in a lot of ways even though technically he had a little bit of a down year number wise some when we strip it away and look at you know he he did there's a lot of things that suggest he's still very much in the prime of his career that with his athleticism his defensive capability you know his ability to you know get the ball in the air especially in our ballpark you know walk rate going up strikeout rate going down those kind of things like are are pretty encouraging signs especially for a guy that's up there in age um look he's a, he can still really play got it and since we'll be talking to you i think every week during the season again i i said to evan to me you're aaron boone uh, and he said, well, you know, some people call him Booney. He might like A.B. I'm not going to call you Skip because I, I don't play for you. But uh, I figured let's just start let's start figuring this out. Uh, what do, you, am I, do you want me to just call you Aaron? Uh, what do you prefer? Um, yeah, you know, let it, let, it, let, it, let it happen organically over time here, all right? right? You know, we'll, all right. We'll, you know, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get in a good rhythm. And, you we'll know, figure it out, right? We'll get a week out. Do you... <laughs> <laughs> Do you like being called Booney, or does it make your skin crawl? Be honest with all of us. No, I like that. You do like it. Okay. That's a clubhouse thing. That's what athletes just, do. It started in hockey. They're all nuts. I just, but, but, but no, I don't mean the club. crazy. But Aaron, I understand that. I don't mean the clubhouse. Like talk show hosts, fans, <laughs> people screaming at you when you're when fans are back in the stands. So forget the players. Right. I get it. That's special. But do you hey, like Booney? Hey, hey Booney! Hey, right. right. Sign this Booney. Yeah. Booney, my kids here. <laughs> hey, Booney, come on. You suck. Oh, you can't sign for a kid, okay? You suck. <laughs> you know what? I like I like the different things I get in different places. You know, like in Chicago, you get a certain accent. You, hey, Boone. You know, and then you're, you're in New York. It's something different. Down in Philly, it's a little different. So uh, I, I like the different things that you know, get yelled at you even when they're they're not real nice. And uh, <laughs> it, is, it is a thing where we always ask, at least I used to, uh, so I'm going to start it up again with Evan. How much you bench pressing okay. these days? <laughs> well, I am, uh, I don't know. I, I actually did a little chest with some dumbbells this week. So uh, okay. I was, I was ripping off 50s, at, you know, like 10 sets, nothing Ten. crazy. All right. Enough to... You know, not embarrass myself. Enough to remember that you used to be a professional <laughs> athlete. I got it. <laughs> used to be. Now, do you are you a gamer at all? Do you uh, do you play Madden? Are you are you playing MLB the Show? Do you do you play Fortnite? Do you get involved with any of that stuff to just stay young and and hip with the younger guys? Uh, <laughs> no, but I have I have four kids, three boys that are in high school, so I could literally walk down the hall right now with. School being out now on a Friday at after four o'clock. If I open up doors, I, I'd probably see Madden in one. I'd probably see <laughs> GT. What it? Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto. Auto. Grand Theft Auto. It? All right. Yeah. There you go. Fortnite. <laughs> uh, I, we got it all. I could walk down the hall and open well, these doors. We are. I'm sure that's what's going on. We are living in the same house, then, my, my <laughs> friend. I got four also. Uh, listen. Yeah. Uh, good luck. Pleasure talking to you. Look forward to doing it throughout the season and. Fingers crossed everything starts on time, and more than anything else, that you and your family are healthy and well and COVID-free and uh, are able to get through this like the rest of us. But we do appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys, and uh, welcome back and looking forward to it. Guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks, there Skipper. You go. Yep. Skipper. Yeah. Skipper. Aaron Boone, everybody, <laughs> manager of the New York Yankees. 